John Papers after Daniel Ellsberg <laughs> stole them. And I don't say that negatively. But he, that's what he did. They got an injunction against the New York Times. They got an injunction against the Washington Post. The Supreme Court had accepted one of those cases, took the other out of order. So it would have the two cases before them at the same time. Again, rare. Some people thought they were going to do that with health policy. I mean, here you have multiple courts having decided the case below. Half a dozen now, I think, we're up to. And the argument is we get a better perspective if we have six cases or four cases than if we have one. Enough different fact situations, enough different lower court judges writing opinions. It will all be helpful to us. And there was the thought that that would happen, as it was the Supreme Court on Health Policy took only one case from the 11th Circuit. It's well aware of the other cases. It just doesn't use this often. Every case before a three-judge panel warrants oral argument. And that's a point I need to make. I'm glad you raised this. Remember, the courts of appeals are mandatory jurisdiction courts. They have to they have to decide every case. There ain't enough hours in the day for oral argument in every case in a big, long, full sign So the judges engage in triage, same as everybody else. What's more important? Some cases are frivolous. I'm using, put that in quotes. Some people call them cookie cutter cases. The, the law is obvious. Why are you bothering us with this? I mean, there's only one correct answer. It takes two seconds. Um, cookie cutter, dead bang, which is appropriate for criminal cases. Others are much more complex. The constitutional language, the statutory language is unclear. The, there are competing precedents. The Supreme Court hasn't given us guidance. Not all Supreme Court cases are very clear. So if you're a lower court judge, I, I know conservative lower court judges who like the Supreme Court in its present conservative stance, but complain bitterly. They are rudderless. They give us no guidance. We're trying to do what they want us to do. Why don't they do better? Because they, instead of writing unanimous opinions, they go five ways to wherever. Those are the cases that get oral arguments. Some don't. And we have now have what are known as, I call, unpublished opinions. Now, they're not unpublished because they do, in fact, show up in print. And they certainly are online electronically. But they are what we call non-precedential. You cannot cite them in other cases. They, they uh, decide this case. So you, you are in Jones versus Smith. They say, affirmed or reversed, end of story, three lines, two paragraphs, that's it. Can't be cited. We've written a very short statement for you, so you got something. Some courts don't do more than say, affirm, see rule 36. That's not helpful. But if you're writing a published opinion that is precedential, you've got to be very careful, because others are going to read it, they're going to apply it. So they engage in triage and get more attention to some rather than others. Now back, you're going to say, what has this got to do? What typical was be long answer to a short question. All three judges on the panel must agree on no oral argument. So if the three of you are the panel, and you say, yeah, the briefs are terrible, incidentally. That's, that's one. The briefs are terrible. How is this turkey going to help us? At our, I mean, they go something like this in private, right? How, how are they going to help us? We don't need oral argument. Waste of time. No oral argument. No oral argument. Ah, uh, there's a little thing, thing there I want to ask them about. That's it. You got oral argument. So that they have to be unanimous about. Now, if it is two to one, 
That one person might say, oh, I dissent. If it's on the facts, it's a not big deal. Sometimes the dissents are longer than the opinions. And you know what they're doing? They're waving a flag to their colleagues. Because one of the ways you get rehearing on bank is not merely because the lawyer asked. It's because some of the judge on the court said, you got it wrong. We need to have the full court do this. You, you committed a travesty. And so you're writing that dissent for your colleagues and not merely. You could say, well, there's some people who say, why publish dissents? You circulate it within the court. You don't persuade your colleagues. Shut up. Suck it in. Whatever. But we have a habit in this country of people being able to write dissents or separate concurring opinions. That's lovely, right? I agree with the result, but I don't agree with the reasoning. So you concur in the result. I'm gonna, let me do something with that. And then, and then I really have to, we're gonna do a, a quick run on, 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 on judicial selection. Incidentally, original jurisdiction, read the Article 3. There are some cases that go directly to the Supreme Court. Period. No going. Boundary disputes. Arizona and California are regularly fighting over the Colorado River water. That's one. The Mississippi moves and where's the boundary between Missouri and Illinois? That is something that's in the Supreme Court's original jurisdiction. So that's, that's written into the Constitution. Okay. Usually not even one case a year. All right. Opinions. Remember I said five to four? All right. Let's have some fun here. Five to four. Now, if all fives agree not only on the result, meaning affirm, reverse, but on the opinion, then that's an opinion of the court. And you read at the beginning of a case, Mr. Chief Justice, no, we don't use Mr. anymore. They stopped that when they anticipated O'Connor. Chief Justice Roberts delivered the opinion of the court. But what if we have oh, Okay, let's say that this is the five. Roberts, Alito, Scalia, Thomas, Kennedy. Incidentally, the, the end joke is the rats. Roberts, Alito, Thomas, Scalia, rats. Or crats if you want to throw Kennedy in there. This is the standard alignment. But what if, because he's more moderate, Kennedy writes a separate opinion? I agree only, sometimes it's, I agree plus I have something I want to throw in. But let's say Kennedy says, no, I agree with the result, but I don't like the reasoning. So I'm concurring in the judgment. That leaves only four justices. This gives you an affirm or reverse. It does not give you an opinion of the court. It gives you what is known as a plurality opinion. Let's make it, let's do this. We have four, and then we have two. Let's say uh, Kennedy and Breyer. This is a plurality opinion, even though it's six to three. Plurality opinions have less precedential value than if you have a full opinion of the court. If you're assigned the opinion to write, you, don't, you want to keep five votes, not only for the result, you want to keep five votes for your opinions, and you very well be better be prepared to compromise, to give a little to accept a suggestion to add a paragraph or to strike a paragraph. All right? Other questions? All right. Quick shift of subject because I have 12 minutes and I, I, I have more time than I usually do because a certain person has, has decided to be non-interventionist today. And I appreciate it. <laughs> usually we go back and forth. I'm turning, I'm asking you a question now. Real shift. Because I've been talking about justices, so it becomes a good lead. I appoint you um, Deputy Attorney General. Because for years, although it's not, it's changed a little more recently. 
The Deputy Attorney General in the Justice Department was the person responsible for, in the executive branch, for making recommendations for judicial selection, for nominations to the federal court, not just for the Supremes. Increasingly, starting with Reagan, the White House has been more involved, particularly for Court of Appeals and um, U.S. Supreme Court. But sometimes the president doesn't know a nominee of the Supreme Court. Obama knew Kagan from Harvard Law School. But sometimes they don't know and don't have a meet for the first time just before the announcement of the nomination. You know there's going to be a vacancy. Go back to the beginning of the Obama presidency. He knew there were going to be, the likelihood would be that Stevens would retire because of age. We still don't know about Ruth Ginsburg's health, cancer. We, we don't learn much about the health of justices. Um, it was sort of expected that there would be departures. So you don't have one right on your plate. But if you're smart, you'll come up with a list. You'll have a short list. What do you look at? And I'm going to go around the room starting here. You're on warning, five second warning. And I'm going to go here. What are the things that you should look at, consider? One to a customer, or I get annoyed. What would you look at? Or do you want to appoint? Yeah. What are the factors you look at in terms of considering we have an appointment to make? What do we look at? I'm not looking for names of individuals. I'm looking for factors, for types, for characteristics. What do you look at? The prior what? Reviews. What, what do you mean by that? Like the decisions they made. All right. Particularly if they are a lower court judge, and Kagan's the first justice in years not to have served on the Court of Appeals. They have a track record. Maybe their education. What? Yeah. What about it? Um, you said one example was like a Harvard Law professor. Good. Elite education, ordinary education, community college, whatever. This is a status conscious country. Absolutely. He's, the justices have not gone to the local, have, have not gone to four seats with all that. How long they've been on the job? Length of prior, whatever that experience is. Absolutely. Um, the number of cases they've decided. Not just the number of cases, it's what, how they've decided them. This is the track record issue. Come on, there are many more. You, you people are staying in an awful narrow yeah. closet here, folks. Would they be actually approved by the Senate or the Congress? Would they, are they confirmable? Some are not confirmable. So you, there's a political piece. How will this go down? And which way would you go if I gave you a choice? Older or younger, and why? Younger, because like if I was President Obama and I appointed a local judge, then that includes The person, that's right. Good for you, good. Reagan, con very clearly, particularly with the lower, this is true for the lower courts too. Well, it's easier to think about in terms of the Supreme. My legacy. Mm -hmm. um, what articles they've written? Oh yes, came back to Bite Robert Bork in the ass, particularly because he tried to disassociate himself from a, oh, those were intellectual exercises. Come on, have a backbone. Stand behind what you did. In fact, there are some justices, some judges who campaign for the Supreme Court. You can't do it openly, but you can put yourself out there. So you write neat, nice articles about, gee, how should we administer the federal judicial system? They're not likely to get you about that. If you write about abortion, whichever way you go, you're going to be in trouble. Um, how they compare to the other judges on the, in the Supreme Court. Oh, OK. How, the answer was how they compare to other judges on the Supreme Court. If you have somebody like, I'm thinking Lewis Powell, thought to be moderate, or Kennedy, let's say Kennedy quit, at the center of the court, makes all the difference. Oh, I'll give a better example. Roberts, when O'Connor stepped down, Roberts is named. So the, the question is, is Roberts as moderate as O'Connor had become? 
And then Rehnquist died, and Roberts' nomination was moved over to be chief. Roberts looks exactly like Rehnquist, so it's substitute one to one. If you think somebody's going to be more liberal or more conservative than who's there, plus you've got the compared to what? What's your short list? I happen to have in the most in the in the in the nomination that led to Kagan, in the vacancy that led to Kagan, I had two two horses in that race, both of them considerably more liberal the judges I knew. And, but you make those comparisons. I could now come on. There there are lots more things you can add. I'll go, I'm going to go back around. Oh, come on! He's hinted at one, which you haven't said directly. Gender. Gender! Ding, 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 ding. Right, pal. Gender, race, ethnicity. Now we've got two Italian Americans for a long time. We didn't have anybody. What, what don't we have? Yes, but yeah, that, the pool is small, but Obama's doing some things on the lower courts, and those people will be elevatable, if you will. What particular case? Well, I take that back. Sorry. Sorry, Sonia. I forgot. Latinos. Sotomayor was p particularly, I mean, that was key, crucial. So we have gender. We have race. We had religion. There was a long debate about whether there was a Catholic seat on the court. We now have six Catholics. They're not there because they're Catholics. They're there because they're conservative. We have six. Actually, you know what? There ain't a Protestant on that court. Absolutely screaming amazing. Uh, opinions as compared to the president themselves? Excuse uh, me? Opinions as compared to the Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that, that's what you're starting to end. The thing I was thinking, you, you, no one's directly said ideology, but ideology is sort of the unwritten that's right. behind you, all you, of it. You have nibbled in yeah. terms of the comparison with others and in terms of, of where are you in relation. You can expect the president. All right. That's key. Let me do a riff. I am not happy with this president. I'm not happy with this president. I voted for him. I supported him during the campaign. I'm from New York. I taught in New York. I'm from Massachusetts. But I have a, had a thing about Hillary. Don't beat on me about that. I supported Obama. He has been a grave disappointment in a number of areas. One of them has to do with his appointment of judges, and I'll get there in a minute. But people assumed that Obama was liberal. Obama is not liberal. I don't know what Obama did. Bill Clinton used to refer to himself as a centrist Democrat. Now, I don't, I'll give you a prize if you can tell me what a centrist Democrat is. That's a label, at least. Obama sort of, is there an ideology there? It's easy to project onto him. Here is this very, very articulate candidate and president. And I'll take articulate over its predecessor. Sorry about that. But that doesn't give me an ideology. My liberal friends, and yes, I'm a liberal, and I'm a card carrying ACLU member. My liberal friends think that somehow Obama was going to name Earl Warren or William O. Douglas or William Brennan. Ain't going to happen. That's not Obama. When we talk liberal and conservative within the Supreme Court, we're talking when we talk liberal conservative justices, we're talking only within that nine. Stevens, who was thought to be the most liberal member of the court, was appointed by whom? Granted, a moderate republic, but a republic. So what did you get from Obama? You get substitution effect. I used to be asked, I collected my share of rotary coffee cups, does it going to make any difference who's, name, who's president? Yeah, McCain would have appointed more Scalia's and Alito's, and if that's what you like, that's fine. And we'll hear the same sort of thing from, from likely Romney in this campaign. But Obama was likely to pick people who were moderate, who were like Breyer before. Ginsburg was very liberal on women's rights, is not on criminal procedure. But Sotomayor 
liberal rel in relation to, Kagan in relationship, but never really changed the composition of the court. Certainly, if the Republicans take the presidency the next time, we will see it move even more conservative. Ideology is crucial. Now, here's the thing that I'm most disappointed by, and I'm watching the clock. This president doesn't understand the importance of naming judges. When Obama took office, there were 100 vacancies in the federal judiciary. Because nothing had happened at the end of, the, of the, the end of Bush's administration. Congress had sort of tied things up. We do this all every time. And there were judges who had taken semi-retired status, senior status, which I haven't talked about. That creates their vacancy. So there were a hundred and there were going to be more. I know a federal judge who happens to uh, summer here in East Orleans who says on the first day of the term when, I, when, when, when Obama became president he should have sent down a hundred names. We have transition teams, they should have been ready. In Obama's, here's a key statistic, in Obama's first year, January 20 to January 20, he sent down 39 nominations in the federal court. That included Sotomayor. So Supreme Court, Court of Appeals, District Court. Give, give, guess me a number for George Bush in the comparable time period. 65. Does that say something to you? Think about it, folks. You have an agenda. One of the things on your agenda is health policy. You know it's going to be challenged. You're a bright guy. You're a law, former law professor. Where do you want it to go? What judges do you want to decide Bush's judges or your judges? And if you look at what the lower court judges did on the health policy law before it got to the Supreme Court, a Democratic appointee went for it and the Republican appointees didn't. He's picked up the pace a little bit. Now, what has he done? Last sentence before I get binged out of here. Is it 40 or 45? 45. Oh, God, it's about five minutes. Mm -hmm. I'll try to give some of it back. Diversity. This president has done an absolutely spectacular, awesome, if you will, job in diversifying the federal bank. Jimmy Carter was the first, made a distinct push, changed the selection process a bit. I want women. I want minorities. The problem in the 70s was there weren't very many women lawyers with length of experience. Somebody talked about length of experience. The American Bar Association takes that into account. We're not putting you on the federal court after two years of law practice. You ought to be there for a while. That changed. There are more women in law school than there are men now. So the pool is there. The pool of blacks is still small. The pool of Native Americans is damn near non-existent. The pool of Asians is very focused. Uh, West Coast, California. Latinos, better distributed, although you end up with very conservative Latinos in Florida, out of the Cuban thing, although that's changing. And the ones in Texas are different, and we, you know, but the point is, you got to have them from, remember they're picked from the lower courts from those states or districts, Obama, so, so we get Carter, we get Clinton, who does a very, very good job, improves the number of women, improves the number of blacks. Even Bush didn't do a bad job. There are Republican women lawyers. Not, did a terrible job in appointing African American. So we get to Obama. Here's the fascinating statistic. A minority. A minority of all of Obama's federal judicial nominations are white males. Absolutely mind-blowing statistic, if you know anything about the history. We used to, in my trade, talk about non-white males. Nominees who were neither male nor white, or both, or whatever, as non-traditional candidates. The non-traditional candidates. So if you're big on diversity, he's done a phenomenal job. 
Has he done enough to fill the judiciary to get rid of these vacancies? We're still at about 75 or 80 vacancies. And they keep developing. People die. They retire, whatever. Two and a half minutes. I'm not giving him the administrative time back. <laughs> Any questions? I got one question for you, and that is why should he have, why in particular should he have made sure he had those hundred names ready the first day? What was true of his first year that has not been true since? That would have affected whether or not he could have filled those vacancies well, remember, with people he wanted. Well, remember I quoted the judge, and I did it by way of hyperbole. I don't know. It wouldn't have been realistic to expect a hundred to come down on the first day. Yeah. The point is they poked around. It they they had wait a minute. He had other things on his agenda, number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, he had trouble filling the positions in the Justice Department who were responsible. And then they screwed up on uh, on Geithner and others about their taxes, and they went back and revetted all the nominees to various positions, including in the Justice Department. They had excuse upon excuse upon excuse upon excuse. He, look, not every president makes the judiciary a priority. Maybe it's because I've taught this stuff for years. I think they should. But just notice what I said about health policy. Oh, that's the other thing. We've got all these other things on our agenda. And we've got Iraq and Afghanistan and terrorism and whatever. Sure, these cases are going to come before the courts. Think about it. But what did he have for that first year? So maybe not 100 the first day, but he could have done 100 the first year if he'd made it a priority. Right. And what did he have the first year in the Senate? He had 60 down. Well, that's the other thing. You don't want to admit. You want to be, you're in denial. Oh, this can't happen to us in midterm, despite the fact that the majority party has lost seats forever in the midterm election. All right, as you're walking out, on Monday, we're going to start an exercise. I am not going to be here on Monday, but uh, you are going to, in pairs, be assigned a case and an assignment sheet to develop. Uh, um, you're going to then, you're going to get the case. It's going to have three cases. One is not going to have a decision. That's the case you're arguing. There will also be two cases which are precedent cases for you to cite. Maybe that should be more than two. Those will have the decisions. Your decision there will, uh, uh, you'll want to use the decision in that case to support your side. In your team of two, one's going to argue each side of the case. You're eventually going to argue the case before the rest of the class as the Supreme Court. That's what you'll be doing on Monday. Uh, and chapter 16 is due Tuesday. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Wasby, on your way out. I didn't take my book. Okay. All right. Thank you, Professor Wasby. And then all we did was yeah. finish the uh, what? Oh, those are for you to keep. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, you know they're for you to keep. Oh, okay. Keep them um, looking at it. I'll give you an assignment. Take them home, look at it, but don't throw it away because I'm going to give you an assignment on it. Yeah. You're welcome. All right. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Have a nice weekend, everyone. Thank you.